If you're a huge Italian food fan, I'm going to show you something that you may have not heard of called nudie. No, no one's getting naked up in here. It's spelled G-N-U-D-I. Super delicious cheese and ricotta dough balls. They are amazing and you are going to love it. These little nudies remind me a lot of gnocchi, except for we're replacing potatoes with ricotta cheese. But first, we're going to start with a little bit of prep. Sound good? Let's cook. I've got a gigantic bowl of baby spinach. Now, traditionally, this recipe would use regular spinach, but I find that to be a little bit bitter. Baby spinach has a little more sweetness in it. It's going to make it that much more delicious. Grab that big old bowl, head over to a large pot of boiling water. The first thing we're going to do is season it very well with salt. I was always told water should be as seasoned as the ocean. Now add in your baby spinach. You're going to have to do it in batches and don't worry. It is going to cook down so much. It's probably only going to be about a cup or so when it's all said and done. Now give it a stir. Make sure to get all of those baby spinach leaves moving around. You don't want to leave one that is uncooked. This is going to help because we need to chop it up later and incorporate it into our little ricotta cheese nudie balls. Go ahead and give it a quick strain. Go over to your sink. And what I'm going to do is just try to chill it really quick with some really cold water that comes out of the sink. Don't worry about going nuts here. Just try to cool it down a little bit. Now go over to a bowl and just put your strainer right in there. What I'm going to do is put it in the refrigerator for a few minutes because I do have some other things to do. And this is also going to help drain it in the meantime. Now go ahead and add a bowl to your countertop. I'm going to put another strainer right over top of that. I've got some whole milk ricotta cheese. Now we definitely don't get the same ricotta that's over in Italy, but we do need to drain it a little bit. That's the reason I have the strainer hanging right over the bowl. One of the issues can be in the United States, our ricotta cheese is much softer and much more creamy than that of what you're going to find in Italy. So that's why I want to drain it off, get as much liquid out of there as possible. It's only going to take a few minutes. And now what we're going to do is bring that spinach right out from the refrigerator. You can see that it's drained off a little bit, but what I usually do is grab a big handful at a time and really squeeze it as good and as hard as I can to get as much liquid and water out of the spinach as possible. You definitely want to take the time to do this because you do not want a waterlogged dough before we cook it. Once they are all squeezed out, I mean, check how much water is in that bowl. That's crazy. And as a side note, if you wanted to skip the process of cooking this baby spinach, you could absolutely use thawed frozen spinach here. Finely minced all that cooked baby spinach. Take the time to do this. There are some stems in there. As you can see, they need to be finely cut up or else the nudie is not going to combine. And when it cooks, it's going to fall apart. So please, please, please do this. Once they are all cut up, I'm going to add it to a very large bowl. This is going to be the main bowl that we make our nudie dough in. Once it's in there now, head back over to our cutting board, grab that ricotta cheese that's just been sitting for a few minutes and pour it right into that bowl. Now you can see here some of the liquid that drained off. That is absolutely perfect. Now on top of the ricotta, I've got some finely grated fresh Parmesan cheese. I've got six large eggs. This is going to help bring everything together. And then I'm going to generously season it with sea salt. Definitely do this. Nothing worse than bland food and especially bland nudie. And of course, I'm going to grind on some fresh cracked black pepper. Now, before we add in the flour, we want to mix this together because we want the yolks to be completely mixed in. So go ahead and grab a spoon and completely combine these ingredients. The dough is going to be very wet at this point, obviously. So go ahead now and add in your flour. I have some zero zero flour left over. All purpose flour will work fantastic in this recipe. Go ahead and mix it together until it's completely combined. There should be no visible dry flour here and the dough will start to tighten up a little bit. But even at this case, you may need to add a little bit more. You don't want this to be incredibly loose. It will be a little bit sticky and that is okay. So be sure to mix it in again. You'll see how that dough is nice and tight there. It looks a little better. This is perfect. And as you can see, I added a little bit more flour there. The dough is kind of like a gnocchi consistency, maybe a little stickier. It's totally fine because here's how you roll them up. Go ahead and grab a large spoon. I'm going to take out about two to three tablespoons and I'm going to put it right into a little bowl of flour, that same zero zero flour I used before. Again, all purposes fine. Be sure to completely roll it around and coat it on the outside because it's going to make it that much easier to roll. Your hands aren't going to be so sticky. This is about the size of a golf ball, maybe a hair smaller than that. 
looks fantastic. At this point, simply set them to the side on a plate or a sheet tray lined with parchment paper. And now it's just about time to cook these up. And let me stop and say this. Obviously, I can't help myself. I cook for a lot of people. I'm Italian. I'm always just afraid I'm going to run out of food for people. But with that being said, these freeze super, super well. And while you're already in the pain of making things that are a little bit tedious, why not make a bunch of it? Pop it in the freezer, boom, pull it out for another dinner, and you're all set. Now, let's cook them up. So in a separate large pot of boiling water, again, we are gonna season it very, very well with sea salt. And then I'm gonna add in about 10 to 12 nudie at a time. You're gonna have to cook this in batches, but thank goodness it does not cook long. You're looking at maybe four to five minutes. And the best way to know when your nudie are finished is when they begin to float to the top, literally just like gnocchi. Once they are floating, simply take them out, set them to the side on a plate or a sheet tray lined with parchment paper, which is definitely my MO. And then once they're all cooked, go ahead and head back over to your countertop. These look absolutely fantastic. You should definitely try one before we serve it up because they're so good. Now, while traditionally nudie are served with brown butter and fresh sage, I have a ton of leftover amazing Pomodoro sauce that I'm gonna serve them up with. Comies, it's like I say every single video. You understand these fundamental techniques like how to make a delicious nudie dough. Then you know how to make gnocchi. You start playing with pasta dough. You incorporate all of these techniques into your everyday cooking. And my promise to you is your food that is homemade from scratch is gonna taste way better than anything at the restaurants, anything at the store. It is gonna be amazing if you keep learning these things and putting them into practice. So now let's plate up in slow-mo. I've got a decent sized bowl here that I'm gonna add a few ladles of that Pomodoro sauce to. You could also put it on a plate. I just think it's easier to eat it in a bowl. Plus I can put more tomato sauce on there without it running out the sides. Now go ahead and serve up a few nudie right into that sauce. I'm only gonna put four. While they don't seem that big, I can promise you they're incredibly filling and four is gonna be just plenty for me. I'm gonna finish it by grating on some fresh Parmesan cheese, just a nice garnish and plus a little more Parmesan cheese, never hurt anybody. Once that's on there, I've got just one more garnish and that is some fresh basil leaves. It adds a nice touch of green, but also once that basil gets into the sauce, oh my gosh, is it just so good. The basil leaves will wilt, they'll kind of infuse into the Pomodoro sauce and man, is it so good. Check out this beauty. Oh my gosh, are these so amazing. It's like eating the filling of a cheese ravioli with the center of a lasagna and then mixing some gnocchi. I mean, dude, so good. Definitely like this video, subscribe to my channel and for sure check out this video because it is seriously, it's amazing. And I'll see you on there.